Okay, hi there. Um, a few days ago, I was able to stumble upon in an undisclosed location some materials that appeared to be coded sort of cryptic clues from the Blue Rose Task Force's basic sort of entry level training materials. And since then, I've had the good pleasure of locating a much more advanced version of this material. And it appears to be sort of a transitionary material that is meant to move uh, potential agents from the domain of pure logic into the realm of maybe like post logic or intuition, which uh, I think, as we know, is a necessary criteria to be an effective member of the Blue Rose Task Force. It's sort of merely uh, formal earthly logic alone is not enough. So this document, which looks sort of somewhat similar to a traditional crossword puzzle, but isn't, is uh, the transitionary materials that I found. And I will say I found um, the answer key that goes along with this, but I'm only going to refer to it if necessary. So why don't you join in and see if uh, this type of sort of hybrid logical slash intuitive thinking is uh, something that's good for you. So let's start with the one across and we have fallout from happening dude broadcast with thought bubble. And we are going to ignore the extra clues in brackets for now. Those are for uh, a special audience of Twin Peaks fans. So we'll ignore the brackets. And we have a word that either means fallout or thought bubble, because the synonym clue is either at the beginning or the end. And judging from the word from, which is often an indicator that the real clue precedes the word from, I'm going to guess that happening dude broadcast with thought bubble is the word play. And broadcast is a very common indicator for some sort of sound play typically for a homophone. And so I'm going to guess that there's a homophone happening here. And another way of saying happening dude might be fun guy. So fun guy might be the homophone for another word that sounds like fun guys, but is spelled differently. And thought bubble is another word for cloud. So what we have here is fungi or mushroom cloud. And I think that looks good. And that's good because that gives us a lot of checking letters along the top. So with that in mind, let's try out. Uh, we'll go one down. From stark, stormy mind, plants in sweater weather. Well, this is tricky because we just talked about the word from often being an indicator that the wordplay follows, but there's no word before from in this case. So I'm going to look for other possible indicators. And I see a word like stormy is often used to indicate some sort of chaos or confusion or mixed up in this. And that's often used as an anagram indicator. So I'm going to guess that there's an anagram here, possibly from Stark. And then that would mean that the definition itself is rather long. Mind plants in sweater weather. Uh, let's see if Stark from Stark gets us anything as an anagram. And it does. So we have Mark, Frost, and anybody who is familiar with Twin Peaks would know that Mark Frost is one of the co-creators or co-conspirers of the story, of the show. But how does it work with the definition here? So we have mind plants in sweater weather. So to mind plants is to mark them or to take note of them or to pay attention to them, and sweater weather we can rephrase as frost. 
So I think that one looks good too. Uh, let's take a look next at two down. And the clue is principal of school angers community bubble. Hmm. What could the clue be? Well, the word play is likely principal used as an indicator of similar to how a word like initial might be might be used or initially. So principal means first. And this is only three letters and we have three words here. So let's take the first letter from each of those words. S, A, C, SAC. And how does that work with the rest of the clue? Well, what's left over is bubble, which would be the definition. And bubble equals SAC. And then for those interested in the brackets, Bob is smiling when he's in a floating sack. So that works there as well. Should we try three down or let's do eight across. Inside haptic rack, potent fruitcake. The word inside often indicates some sort of word play. So sometimes something being hidden and mentally I'm gonna activate a bell. And that bell means that there's a hidden word. So let's look inside haptic rack, potent fruitcake. And we could see across C-R-A-C-K, a word meaning fruitcake or crack pot, oops. And yes, at a glance that would equate to Mr. or should I say Dr. Amp. Let's go for three, down. Hands out, accepting English gift for symbols. <sighs> Hands out, accepting English gift for symbols. Four is probably indicating that the word symbols is the definition. And hands out accepting English gift is probably the rest. One thing I see is gift, which can be present. So we'll try that since we have the B. And then it looks like present is inside some other word. So accepting would be an indicator that one word is contained inside another word. Uh, hands out. We have English, which is often abbreviated to E. So I'm going to assume that it goes here, and then the rest of it is some word indicating hands out, which could be an action, like putting your hands out to try to accept a gift, or it could be delivers, or gives, or rations, R A. T I O N S. And that leaves us with representations or symbols. Hmm. And for those interested in the bracket clues, we have all characters potentially are representations. Some people take that theory. Well, that's a big one. Um, let's take a look at uh, four down. And even though I have the answer key nearby, I'm trying not to look at it. And I honestly can't figure out how four down makes sense. So let's look at 10 across. Listen to playback between us, your majesty. Three words here. So hmm. 
Mm. The clue is either going to be listen or listen to playback or possibly your majesty. Listen to playback. Mm. How does one listen to playback? Playback could be an indicator of some sort of reversal or but between us. Between is often indicating that one thing exists inside of another. Between us could be, could be, let's look at the word count. Between us could be off the record, just between us, like, like a journalist. Your majesty is often a queen or king or royalty, which is often abbreviated to ER. But how does this make sense? So if you wanted to listen to playback, you could listen to something off of a recorder. If something was recorded, you could listen off the recorder. And then we get listen to playback. I don't know if I like that one or if it's fair, but we'll assume it's correct. And let's take a look at seven down. Dutch and static bottomless eater. Well, Dutch is often abbreviated to D. So we're going to assume that that's part of the word play. And we have Dutch and static bottomless eater. Hmm. So eater or bottomless eater would be the synonym. Another word for eater starts with a D. Or disher. Hmm. Dutch and static. Bottomless. So bottomless means something is removed from the end. Um, let me come back to that. Six down. Eternal alien option in retreat. Hmm. Eternal, alien option in retreat. Hmm. Now think about this one. This is one of those bizarre clues that is really hard to make any sense out of. Eternal. Option in each in retreat. Eternal could mean uh, ever, ever present or everlasting or never ending, fully connected. In retreat indicates, or the word retreat indicates some sort of reversal, moving from back to forward. And the word in here could be some sort of indication that something is in or inside of something else. And if I had a sound effect button, I would hit it. And especially in honor of this clue, I would play that in reverse. And we see here a hidden word, alien option. And we look across the gap and we see one, one. Eternal. All is eternal, all is one. That one might be a little bit of a stretch. But for those who understand the bracketed part of the clue, this is definitely the right answer. So let's look at nine across. Part of design, i.e. espousing contrarian understanding. Six letters. <clears throat> Part of design.
part of could mean that something is a small part of something larger. Contrarian understanding hmm. could be some sort of disagreement or rejection, rebuttal. Uh, hmm. Contrarian. Contrarian could also indicate that something is going against or going in reverse, going backward. We have part of and we have backwards as indicator words. So that means something is going backwards as part of something else. And here we could see it. We look across design, i.e. espousing. And is this our second consecutive hidden word? And this time a backward hidden word. We have E-S or S-E-E-I-N-G, seeing. Seeing, which is a synonym for understanding. That's pretty good. That gets us some help for number seven down. So Dutch and static bottomless eater. <sighs> An eater is a diner. So how does that how does that work out? So Dutch is abbreviated to D. We have Dutch and also static. So D plus a word for static, inert, inert. Take off the bottom of the word, take off the last letter, and we get D plus inert minus T, diner. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, let's try, well, let's take a look at number 13 across and I have changed my shirt because the other one might have been. <clears throat> let's take a look at, let's take a look at 13 across and I have changed my shirt because the other one might have been just crazy looking with the stripes. Although I think this is probably no better. Anyway, 18, uh, 13 across says, easier to if I'm better. Totally forgetting 50 yards. Hmm. So numbers are often indicators of abbreviations. And 50 can be abbreviated to L. Maybe yards is abbreviated to Y. So possibly this ends in L-Y. Let's, let's just make the assumption that that might be happening here. Easier to if I'm better. So the clue is probably easier or possibly easier to. Uh, but then we, have, then we have I in here and I is an indicator uh, of a self-reference by the puzzle maker himself or herself. So that is interesting. Uh, easier to if I'm better. Maybe what would be easier to finishing? Maybe finishing the puzzle? Or hmm, totally forgetting 50. Forgetting means getting rid of. So totally can mean completely. Completely getting rid of the L and the Y. And there we have it, complete. Complete, in this case, would translate to easier to if I'm better. And that would be to complete this puzzle. Mm, maybe that's fair, maybe not. But that's pretty clever. Uh, let's try 14 across. Vacationers from Ecuador imprisoned by hurricanes. Okay, so vacationers is probably the clue because you get vacationers from the wordplay, which would be Ecuador imprisoned by hurricanes. 
Ecuador is usually abbreviated to E, as many proper nouns are, imprisoned by hurricanes. So uh, keeps happening to my keyboard, the endless Gs. Uh, let's see. So E would be inside or imprisoned by a word for hurricanes, gusts. Gusts with E in it. Guests, and does that work? Yeah, vacationers are guests. Okay, uh, let's try 16 across. Gritty artery. Hmm. So this looks like it's probably a double definition when it's this short that usually is. So that would be two words basically defining the same thing. So two synonyms for the answer. Gritty could be tough. It could be uh, crumbly. Could be uh, artery is often thought of as a vein. Arteries are sometimes used for passageways or roadway, highway, highway, street, street, gritty from the street, street savvy. Here we have it, street. Uh, 11 down. Undefeated vocal warm up goes viral. Ay, ay, ay. Goes viral. Hmm. Viral. Goes viral. Uh, Undefeated could be tops, could be best. So the clue is either undefeated or viral or goes viral. Let's just try top which is often used in these types of puzzles for like winner or undefeated or best uh, top vocal warm up. What do people do when they're warming up their vocals? Or does this mean some sort of heating? Me, 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 me. This is ridiculous. Top, undefeated, vocal warm up, me, me, me. And we get something that goes viral, top meme. That's pretty funny. Uh, let's try, let's try 12 down. <laughs> Party amidst emo jihadis to type homemade message. Okay, so there's there's no way to know. <laughs> there's no way for me to... It's so insane sounding, I'm going to guess that it's some sort of anagram or hidden. Well, party is often used to indicate the word do. So let's try that. Do. And this one word. This is two words. So to do something party and then amidst would either mean that do is inside or the next part of the clue is inside something else but do is already there we got the d so let's assume amidst hidden word and a ridiculous one do Amidst emo jihad, what could emo jihadis be? Emo j, emo g. So does that work with the rest of it? Uh, homemade message, type homemade message. 
Type homemade message emoji. Do emoji. I don't think so, but I have to assume that that's what the answer is. Then we could even, let's just check. Should we cheat? I don't know if that worked or not, but we'll keep it for now. 17 across. Parisian greetings from good sailor trading alloy. Not mine. Not mine could be the clue. Hmm. But we have the word from. So that's telling us that Parisian greetings is probably the synonym. Uh, and what comes after from is probably the word play. So from good sailor trading alloy. Sailor is one of those things that's often abbreviated to something else. Um, Alloy is a strange word. Probably abbreviated or part of some sort of hidden word, maybe, or trading alloy. No, I don't know how we would get eight letters. Can I have your attention? Seventh graders, you are now dismissed to begin your. We can look at. Uh, the definition for it, Parisian greetings. So, hello, goodbye, how are you? P presumably uh, a French version of this. Uh, I am not a French speaker, but how do you say goodbye? Au revoir, could that work? Or, or, let's see, I don't know how to spell that. Uh, no. Hello? Um, bonjour. Greetings, plural. Could be this. Let's see. From good. Whew. Sailors is... Um... Uh, Often abbreviated to J. So the J would be trading for the alloy. Is alloy? Alloy. I'm going to pause and look it up. So I've found out that alloy can be abbreviated to Y. So sailors can be J for Jack. Jack is often abbreviated to J. Alloy Y, so we're trading a J for a Y, or maybe vice versa. So not mine. If it's not mine, it's yours. And I see bonjours. So I guess if you trade the Y for the J, we get yours, bon which would be good. So we get bonjours, Parisian greetings from yours with the Y turned to a J and good. Bon. That one is not my favorite, but let's see. This one might be better for me. 17 Dan, exist before middle school's middle. Hmm. Exist before middle school's middle. Hmm. Exist before middle. Middle and the apostrophe s sometimes doesn't equal possession. It often equals the word is. So that might mean exist before middle school equals or is middle. So I'm gonna guess middle is the definition. And exist before, hmm. 
middle school exist. Exist in puzzles like these is often uh, be. To exist is to be. Before middle school, which my students are middle schoolers and they are teenagers, so before middle school would be tween. Tweens. So between is a word for middle. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Let's see, 15 down. Boston breed without royalty, but with disgruntled cries for spooks. Spooks. So maybe all of this is wordplay for a word that equals spooks. Spooks. Uh, spooks could be noun. It could be a verb. Maybe an adjective, but uh, probably not. If it was a verb, it would be to like to freak out, to uh, to scare, to terrorize. Maybe Boston breed. That's terrier without royalty. So that means we're going to take something off. Royalty is often er. So let's do terrier. But without the ER. And it looks like the word is terror, not terror, terrifies. But how do we get that? Most breed without royalty. Okay, so no ER, but with disgruntled cries. Bye. <laughs> this is. Uh, Shakespearean here, phi, which is a, a uh, an utterance of disgust. So if we have disgruntled cries, that would be phi's. Combine that with Boston breed, terrier. Um, terrier without the ER for royalty, and there we have it. Spooks or terrifies would be the definition. All right, let's see. Uh, where to next? Might as well try 18 across. Move to the right, skipping second with headless city chaos. Who am I really? Oh my gosh. Uh, this is a long one. Move to the right could be the definition. Uh, skipping second, that often means you're going to do some sort of alternate or skip the second word or the second letter. With headless city chaos. Hmm. Who am I really? I don't know. Move to the right. Could we uh, switch parties to radicalize, to ship in some way, to move, to indent, to tab, to Let's try it then. Nope, that doesn't fit. I N. But let's skip the second. So let's try this. N. We'll skip the second letter. I get rid of the N. D E N. Well, that fits. Ident. Uh, headless city would be. City <laughs> without the without the head, maybe that would be I T Y. That fits. And that is a eight letter word. So we have an eight and a six. Who am I really? Identity. So who am I really must be the clue. Identity. Who am I really? And how did we get there? Move to the right would be to tab or to indent, like on a keyboard. You want to indent, you're moving your cursor to the right. Headless city, oh, and I then indent without the N would be skipping second. Headless city would be city without the first letter. Um, 
chaos is the word for crisis and who am I really is when one is <clears throat> perhaps amidst an identity crisis. That's pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, we'll try 18 down. You're conjuring compiler's face. Hmm. Compiler often means the person who made or assembled the crossword puzzle. So that's a self-reference. Uh, and we have I, so it's possible that I is referring to the compiler. Hmm. Conjuring. Conjuring is sometimes an indicator word, maybe, for an anagram, possibly. I'm not sure about that. So the clue is probably face. So another word for face starts with an I. Hmm. And a conjurer, someone who's a conjurer is a mage. So here we get image for face. Okay. Uh, 19 across. Martin's picture. Galahad surfs aboard Digital Ivory's firm. So my first thought is that this is possibly referring to the, the cryptic mystic himself, Martin, uh, but who else is there? Martin's picture. Hmm. Galahad is a famous knight, I think, saint. Hmm. Martin's picture. Surfs aboard Digital Ivory's firm. Digital Ivory. Firm is one of those words that has many meanings. And I think it might be the I think it might be the definition here. Possibly. Uh, firm could mean, you know, relating to the texture. It could mean a business or a company of some sort, a law firm, for example. This I'm not sure about. Uh, let's try 20 down. Mirror talk. Specs level by the sound of it. Uh, by the sound of it. By this, okay, the sound of it is indicating some sort of homophone. So that would be a word that sounds like another word, uh, but it's spelled differently. Specs level. Specs. Spectacles. What does that mean, specs level? Hmm. Mirror talk. Mirror is reflection. What do you say to a reflection? Uh, specs level, specs level, glasses, I. And it's two words and three letters. Specs level is how high? If it's on my head, it's head high. If it's down here, it's chin high. If it's on my nose, it's eye high. There's no way that that could be it. I. Hmm. Let's try that. I. And my keyboard's not working. Let's see. Okay. I. I. Now that is a stupid clue. Let's see. Uh, mirror talk. <laughs> Would you say hi to I in the mirror? Uh, specs level is 
at the level of the eye height. I'll keep this for now. Oh. Okay, Martin's picture. Martin Scorsese. I see it. I see it. Martin Scorsese, one of the great picture makers. And one of his best known films would be Casino. So Martin's picture was the definition. And that means Galahad surfs aboard Digital Ivory's firm. Digital Galahad is a knight. And that's often abbreviated to N. Surfs aboard. So I would imagine that's like climbs amidst or uh, stands atop of or is part of and surfs aboard is indicating uh, sort of like a that one thing is part of something else so if we take out the end that leaves us with Casio and there we have the famous uh, keyboard company so digital ivories firm would be the keyboard company Casio all right that's pretty cool Let's try a 21 across. Scintillating vote for no stranger to love. Shoeless. I'm going to guess shoeless is a indication that something is sort of bottomless, missing its feet, missing its shoes. So scintillating vote for no stranger to love. So scintillating vote is probably the definition. Since shoeless is probably part of the wordplay, let's see, scintillating. Scintillating. Vote for no stranger to love. <laughs> uh, no stranger to love. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. Are you no stranger to love? Am I no stranger to love? Is Rick himself? No, let's try Rick without shoes. Mr. Astley himself. And scintillating would be electric. So, oh, and then there's, there's vote. Elect. Okay, so if vote is elect and no stranger to love is Rick Asley without shoes. And there it is, scintillating, electric. That's okay. Hmm. Let's see, 23. Deviled desert croakers, acrobatic dragonflies with disheartened power. Three words. Uh, I've seen disheartened before, so I know that that's probably in the uh, wordplay section, and that means sort of to take the middle out of something. So, power can be abbreviated in a couple different ways: P W V I S. Uh, we'll hold off on that. And acrobatic is a word that indicates sort of something jumbled or uh, moving around a lot. So that's probably an anagram indicator. And dragonflies is 12 letters. So we need 13. So if we wanted to take the middle out of something and it was power, we'll go with viz and we'll take the I out. And we'll stick the, oh, I'm sorry, it was 11 uh, words in drag. Yeah, 11 letters in dragonflies plus the VS. We'll turn that into an anagram. And deviled desert croakers would be the definition, probably. Uh, three words. So I'm guessing it'll be a sim similar pattern with each word. Sort of a being synonymous with one of the three words in the definition. And deviled can be evil.
Desert can be sand. Croakers can be frogs. And let's see if that works out. That looks like it has the V and the S from power, disheartened, with the I taken out. Uh, we see a VS, dragonflies, looks good. Looks good. So let's say 22 down. Essential character of chatty spy. Additionally. Chatty spy. Essential is sometimes the first character. Chatty spy. I mean, it's, it can only be so many. Maybe T W O T A O Dow T O O. Additionally, is two. But how do we get to essential? Essential character of chatty spy. Hmm. Character. Essential character is the middle portion. Essential character. The middle usually means one letter. What would what could go around if if the middle section, if the middle portion is T O O, that could be what can go before T. And so not not too many words could be this would be stool. Stool, like stool pigeon. Chatty spy is a stool. And the essential character is, I don't like this clue very much. I think there's a better way to describe the midsection, but T-O-O -O is the middle, uh, is the middle of stool. And that means we have, wow, just two left, four down. Scrambled you the recipe al fresco. So scrambled or al fresco is the definition. Yeah, I, I don't see any anagram uh, uh, potential because of the word count. Al fresco, but I do know al fresco is outside. So you're dining al fresco, you're, you're dining out here. Let's see how the word play works. Scramble this. Hmm. I just figured out what was wrong there. And so this was a mistake on the, I believe, a mistake on the compiler's end. Because scrambled is an indicator for uh, an anagram. And what we have here is a hidden word. And if you were to change it to something like measure of you, which, which still lends itself towards like the food misdirection, with recipe, I think scrambled was probably uh, a mistake because it was, he or she was going for a food reference, but measure of indicates that we have a hidden word. And here we could see it in you, the recipe, we have O-U-T-H-E-R-E -E out here. <clears throat> so I guess we were okay to struggle with that one. And now to the final clue, catapult living person for euros amongst acrobatic fiscal congrats. It's a mouthful, uh, but catapulting a living person for euros is pretty funny to think about. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Catapult living person. The pattern in this puzzle has been 
whenever there are three words for a long clue, that that has been the, uh, the definition. So I'm going to assume that's the case here. Let's see. Four euros can be E-U-R. It could also be uh, short for Europeans, which would be abbreviated with an E. So I'm going to guess that an E is somewhere amongst the anagram of fiscal congrats. And acrobatic is an anagram indicator, just indicating you know, tumbling and moving around, uh, parts going from here to there. So if we take the E from euros and add that to fiscal congrats and look for a three-word anagram, we could try to match catapult with cast, like cast out, like to sort of cast a fishing line. Uh, could be like to fling. Living could be uh, O-R-G, organic. And then often in puzzles like these, uh, person is self. And that looks like it'll do it. I'm not sure how this works when I check, but I'm going to try to check the whole grid and let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm not sure what just happened there, but nothing changed. So let me just change a letter to see if we get any uh, check grid. Confirm. Yes. So that that's right. We did have it. So check grid confirm and no movement means we did okay and we did about as well as we could expect the blue rose task force training materials satisfied and i believe that these training materials were sort of meant to be a transition between maybe two states like pure logic as one state and possibly like post logic or maybe intuition as another. And this type of challenge kind of asks you to move back and forth between the two. A lot of times you're using your intuition to sort of guess where to devote your uh, attention to first. And intuition as defined, I think very nicely by David Lynch is a combination of intellect and emotion. And I think that's really at play in uh, puzzles like these. So uh, I'm not really sure what else to add, except uh, thanks for playing along. I hope it was enjoyable to anybody who watched. And I hope you have a good day.